Welcome, this is the third video of the CMake project tutorial on how to use Qt and VTK as one of your CMake projects or with one of your CMake projects. That sounds like a mouthful. Anyways, so last time we left off where we had already a class that was created from Qt Creator to draw uh, an, a button and also an OpenGL widget, which we're going to use to interact with using VTK. So this is where we left off last time. So I'm going to close this. Now we're going to edit the code of the main window. So uh, you can come here to the solution explorer and type main and double click main window to open it. Now I like my code to be a little different. I like my variables at the top. So I'm going to copy and paste the UI. This variable contains all the UI elements of your UI form that we created in Qt Creator. So it contains the button, it contains the whole window itself, and it also contains the OpenGL widget. And then uh, this is, of course, the constructor and destructor. So I'm going to include some classes that we're going to need. So first off, we're going to need a render window. So VTK generic OpenGL render window. We're also going to include the renderer, so VTK renderer. And we also need to include the VTK interactor. Now we're going to use the Qt VTK interactor. And lastly, we need the type of interactor style. So I'm going to use the default interactor style. Here we go. Once that's done, I'm going to create those four variables that I need down here. So VTK is smart pointer. We're going to need the generic OpenGL widget render window. Sorry. And I'm going to call it M render window. Then I'm going to do one more. This is going to be the renderer. M renderer. And then I'm going to do the QVTK interactor, which is the M interactor. And the last one is the VTK interactor style. M interactor style. Then we also had a button. That button was going to trigger that we were going to draw, we we're going to draw a sphere on this uh, OpenGL widget that will be handled by uh, VTK. So I need a slot. So public public no public ah public slots and i'm going to call this on draw sphere click all right that's all we need on our header so i'm going to leave the header there and then i'm going to open the main window that cpp and i'm going to open another window down here and the reason why i had uh, the header files and and the way i organized this is that Whatever you put here, these files will follow the same structure when you do your includes. So right now, this is this is on the on the think of the root of the include. So in here, I like the other convention better with this. So instead of saying include quotation main window, I like main window like that because I can manage my my folder structure however I want. If I had a folder here that said something and I put main window inside that folder, then here it will be include that something slash main window. I like to organize it that way. You don't have to, but uh, that's how I do it. We need to, however, leave this as is because this code is generated by Qt, so we have to leave it like that. So we're going to create our variable member. So we started with mRender window, which is a VTK smart pointer of a VTK generic OpenGL render window. I'm going to create a new one. Then we also need the renderer, which is a VTK smart pointer of a VTK renderer. A renderer that sounds like a mouthful too and then we're going to do the interactor which is a qvtk uh interactor uh oh, no smart pointer VT qvtk you know you say this so many times it's, it just gets interesting and then the interactor style which is interact vtk interactor style new all right those are all our variables that we need um, then I like my curly braces up here. That's where they should be. Um, but that's why I like it. So this is required by Qt for any form. So this will set up all the UI elements. So we leave this as is. After this, we're going to do a few things. We're going to do set up the rendering. Rendering. Then we'll set, set the background color of our, of our open yield widget. And lastly, set the UI connections. That is, when we click the button, we want to do something. We also need a function that we defined here. So it's the on draw sphere click. 
So I'm going to do void main window on rock sphere click and do this. Now we're going to leave in this code. What are we going to do? We're going to create a sphere. We're going to create the actor where the sphere is rendered. And then we'll add the sphere actor to the OpenGL widget. Okay. Well, that's it. So let's start filling in this code to set up the render. Now this is very important. You have to do it in this order. I've tried different orders. The first time I figured this out, it took me a long time because I had to try different things. So try to follow. This is the order that you should do it. At least this is what the order that I found. It works perfectly fine. I have no issues. So first we set up the render window to add the renderer. Renderer. So M renderer, right? Then the M the render window, oh, the window we're going to set the interactor to our M interactor. Now, even though we're not using an interactor, I'm not going to do any changes about the interactor or the interactor style. Maybe you don't even want to change them. You should still use this convention. You should still create one, add it, uh, because sometimes VTK underneath does some interesting things. And unless you're an expert, uh, you might not know what is going on. Definitely, I don't know what's going on underneath. So um, this is why. Now. Remember, in our Qt creator, we created an OpenGL widget, and then we promote it to a QBTK OpenGL widget, something, something. So we need to set this render window to that widget. So I, like I told you earlier, the variable UI contains the elements in our UI. So if I do UI, and I look for what? OpenGL widget right there. And this is a Qt OpenGL widget because it's one of the promoted classes. So I'm going to set set render window and it's going to be my render window. Lastly, my interactor, which I set to my render window, I'm going to set the interactor style to my interactor style. And then lastly, I'm going to initialize my, my interactor. Then I will set the background color. So to set the background color, we do it on the renderer, set background, and I'm going to set it to red, because why not? And the last thing, is well actually I'm gonna go ahead and run it so I'm gonna hit F5 or you know run up here I like shortcuts so yeah so once we're here as you can see this is properly linked since we changed the background color of the open geo widget so we are in control of this frame so we close it go back here now we're gonna set the the fact that when we click on the button we can draw a sphere so I need to do a connection so I'm gonna connect the UI, the the uh, what did I call it? The draw sphere button to what? To its function, to its signal, to its click signal, and I'm going to connect it to this object, which is a main window. To what function? The on draw sphere click. So when I, whenever you click on the draw sphere button, this function will be called. So let's create the sphere. So we need to include certain classes here. So we need to include, what do we need to include? We need to include the sphere source. So include VTK sphere source, source. We also need VTK actor because we need to draw it on the screen. We also need to include the VTK poly data mapper, which maps the data to the screen. And that's it. So we come down here, create sphere. So VTK smart pointer. VTK sphere source, which is sphere source equals VTK. Is, you know, this is this is this is a lot of typing, but it's simple stuff. And then we will say sphere source set the radius to five, and sphere source, nope, sphere source. Ah, the sphere source. Why why does it why do you do that, Visual Studio? Uh, and then we're going to say update, which will create the data. Then we're gonna create our actor and our and our and our data mapper. So VTK smart pointer, VTK poly data mapper. Uh, we're gonna call it sphere mapper. Smart pointer, VTK poly data mapper. Sp uh, nope, new. And then we will set the to the mapper. We'll set the data. Which data? The sphere source data. Get output. Oh, get output. So, again, we create a mapper, and we're going to set the poly, da poly, poly data from our sphere source, get output. Then we need to add it to an actor. So VTK smart pointer, VTK actor, 
So he's going to be the Spear, which is a new actor. New. Right? And then the Spear will set the mapper to Spear Mapper. This is this is standard procedure for OP, uh, for OBTK, the way you set actors to the screen. We have our actor. We need to add it to what? We need to add it to our renderer. So M renderer, add view prop, what? The Spear. Then we're going to, the renderer, we're going to reset the camera to make sure that the sphere is visualized and then we're gonna render the render window. So we run it. Sorry, I didn't mean, I mean to yell, just got excited there. So we have a red screen here uh, that we can change colors. We draw the sphere and voila, we have a, uh, a sphere that we draw at the moment that when we click, it'll give us a sphere. So yeah, th this is a it's a very simple project. You can now use this as a, as, a, as a skeleton or as a bare bone for your own project. You can come here and add more forms. You can add more header files, more source files. Every time you add a new file, you come, you configure, you generate. You come to Visual Studio, you run it, you edit it, you continue to your development, whatever you need. So you don't need to do differences to your CMake list. Uh, with that being said, this is the conclusion of the tutorial. Uh, just let me show you a few more remarks that you should have into consideration. So let's say that you have an issue here and you want to debug. Notice we're in release. When you hit run, uh, it, it's, it doesn't stop. It'll just go. So what do you need is you can go to release with dev info. And when you hit run, um, uh, it has to recompile because we changed the, 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 the configuration type. Now it stops, and you can actually see things. You can say, oh, okay, is this null or whatever. So when you need to debug, go to rel with dev info, release with debug info. When you when you don't, you just go back to release. Do not use debug. You can use those. It, it's just not going to work. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, if you also are interested in using like the imaging toolkit, the ITK, you add it the same way that we added VTK. You compile it, add it to the path, add it to our CMake, you, and then you'll have it available. If you are in Linux, remember you have to compile, not with Visual Studio, but you'll compile with make files. Then in Qt Creator, you will open your CMake's list, which will be the opening of your project, and it'll do the rest for you. So you're replacing the CMake build and generate uh, in Unix by using the Qt Creator instead. If you have questions, if you're stuck, maybe I can do a video showing you how to do it for Unix. Uh, leave leave a comment in the in the description if you have an issue with something. I hope this is useful to you, and I wish you good luck with your projects. If you like this tutorial and these kinds of videos, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.